at Vox Day Zurich with Antonio. You gave a talk at lunchtime, how to defend yourself from an attacker armed with a mathematician. Is that correct? Yes, correct. Thereabouts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically, uh, yeah, it is, um, the talk is about how the transport layer security works. And basically, behind uh, the connection from your browser and the server is not really clear, but in the background, there is a lot of maths happening. And sometimes things go wrong. <laughs> and today I shown an example of a vulnerability that I found last year uh, on OpenSSL. It's one of the biggest uh, server um, software that runs TLS. And some research I've done with some American universities. So About what it. was the vulnerability? So basically, um, OpenSSL had three small issues that combined together um, um, made the, the, the server vulnerable. An attacker can steal the private key of the server. Okay. So basically, this is... Quite a big deal. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, the, the, the outcome was not nice, let's say. So the maths behind it, where would you start? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> was, uh, uh, the, the math is not really complicated. But it's basically is um, is what is behind the scene on uh, Diffie-Hellman handshake, and is some the math is not really com complicated, but um, with the without the right knowledge to implement it, there, there can be some some issues like in this case. So OpenSSL did not big mistakes, but usually cryptography doesn't is not doesn't forgive even the slightest mistake brings huge vulnerabilities. So the basics of a handshake from a mathematical point of view, and you have to correct me as I go, right. is I would like to communicate with you. Right. So I send across to you a public key. A public key, exactly. Yeah, and you're you correct. check to see whether or not that public key matches your public key, and then you send me a private key. Is that right? It's almost correct. Basically, in the in the handshake, um, this is correct in some cases, but in, in this case, it's basically me and you. So you send me a public key, I send you a public key, and finally we are able to, to share a secret. Uh, okay, and so that secret, who sends the secret if I send you the public key? No one. That's what the secret is never sent in the network. But okay. basically, just me and you sending our own public key to each other, we're able to to, sh to derive a new secret. And somebody that stays in the middle, so a man in the middle, cannot derive the same secret. And this only using in maths and so-called uh, one-way functions. So there are some functions that are really easy to calculate in one way and really impossible to, to calculate the reverse. So is it a transformation of the public key? Exactly. You can see as a transformation, yes. And so and how could that go wrong? It can go wrong. Um, basically, uh, in this case, OpenSSL did uh, three mistakes, and the first one was, was uh, repeating this, uh, this uh, public key every time. So usually this key is better being ephemeral, so changing every time. That was not the case. So um, because the important thing to understand is that if you do only these mistakes, nothing happened. In this case, there were really three little mistakes that eventually landed to the vulnerability. And so did this mistake about repeating. It, the second mistake it did, it was not validating the public key that the browser or the client was sending. The third mistake they were employing in some case, or they were allowing to employ some prime numbers that was not ideal. Okay, it so turns, they were too small. Or they were not too small, but they were good. But they had the p minus one, so p is a, a, a prime number. Yeah. P minus one is a always even because p is prime, and this p minus one was a, a could, you could factorize this p minus one in many small factors. And again, the per se is not a problem if you validate. But since uh, OpenSSL did as well the mistake of not validating, and it was repeating this uh, this uh, public key every time, adding these three little mistakes, I could actually retrieve the, the the private key. And the interesting part is why you say why OpenSSL was using this p minus one with these so many small ma ma um, no factors. The reason is like because they follow an RFC, so some specification was actually given these prime numbers. Oh, okay. That in this case it was not ideal, right? So you should be ultra careful. Yeah. And then is it that if you repeat the public key, it gives more time for an attacker to try out different combinations? Yeah, yeah. The attacker could like uh, derive the key before mod 2, for example, then mod 3, then mod this, all these small numbers, then you will use uh, something called Chinese Remander Theorem, and okay. you can get 
basically the, the entire key back. That's the bit where you lost me, I'm afraid. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I had to blame. <laughs> well, well, thank you very much. Thanks to you. Thank you.